Wow. As you hear the sound of my voice, it actually is pretty early in the morning and I have been woken up to so many like notifications, not only on YouTube, but also on Twitter about what happened to Cena. Now, I'm going to WrestleMania 32. This is something I have been planning for the entire year. Me and my homeboy, um, me and my homeboy Big D, and we are actually going to be going down to WrestleMania 32 in Dallas um, in March. Now, the biggest concern for me is that you got half of the prime players in the roster injured, especially John Cena with a torn rotator cuff. Now, a rotator cuff injury can take, depending on the individual, if the individual is healthy enough, it could take four to six, uh, actually four to six months for healing. If you're in bad shape, it takes six to eight months. Um, but John Cena came back in, in a few weeks, probably w within maybe three months for his prior injury uh, when he was in the Royal Rumble. And with him, they probably might try to have him back within four to six weeks. That won't be possible with a torn rotator cuff. And as many times as he's torn it, he's going to be out for a while. Now, the biggest concern for me is that there was supposed to be a big main event match between him and The Undertaker. And this is supposed to be The Undertaker's last ride. This is supposed to be Mark Calloway's last match ever. This is a retirement match for him. And Cena's the only dude, and I know that there was a time that he actually did, um, that he actually did face Undertaker, but not in his highest form, not on a pay-per-view. And it was brief. This was supposed to be pretty much the biggest match of Cena's career, as well as the farewell match for The Undertaker. And with that being capped, what's going to happen? There's so many things, and I, I guess I can understand now why Vince McMahon decided to drop that bombshell, was because he knew about what happened to Cena prior. It probably happened that night he wrestled Del Rio. That's my opinion. The fact that he's going to just out of nowhere have this happen, he probably injured himself again when he had that match with Del Rio. It had to have happened. That's just my opinion. That's my theory because he wouldn't have been cleared to come back and have a match that advertised if he was still injured. So something tells me he re-injured his shoulder again when he wrestled Del Rio. That's just my theory. There's been no speculation about that. And that's probably why Vince McMahon did drop that bombshell. And don't get me wrong, for the Royal Rumble, that does open up a huge amount of possibilities. I've already done my video on it, and I'll leave it in the card above for you guys that want to take a look at it. But honestly, y'all, this leaves a huge gap in WrestleMania 32, and they're going to pretty much be crawling. I mean, I mean they're going to be going by the seat of their pants with this whole thing. They got to make the Royal Rumble so star-studded to where they have to have at least three or four decent feuds built up. They can't have do it now. And now that all of these major players are, are injured, that's supposed to be taking um, taking part in WrestleMania 32, maybe this may be a, uh, an eye-opener for them. Maybe this will get them to realize not to depend on one individual to hold the company up, and maybe they'll start trying to make stars again or allow the stars to make themselves. When it came to the Attitude Era, the most beloved era of all wrestledom that everybody keeps saying it should go back to, um, even then, and even during the Ruthless Aggression Era, I will say that they were able, that there were lots of stars that could take Stone Cold's place. When Stone Cold was injured, we had The Rock, and we also had Mankind. We had, we dare I say, Dude Love and Cactus Jack. We had a huge plethora of, and I actually said plethora of, factions that we all knew and loved back then we had a very strong tag team division the divas division don't get me wrong was very weak even though they had the ridiculous broad panties matches every single night it was weaker then but it was held up by two individuals lita and trish but now that they have to understand that the biggest money maker and even though you may hate him the dude is a draw i'm sorry roman reigns ain't there yet but John Cena is a draw, the major draw, a draw for kids and probably some kids and women. I'll be real. Kids and women draw to John Cena. The, he's the biggest draw of the company. And having the biggest draw gone 
for more than possibly six months, they have to do something. Seriously. This Royal Rumble needs to be the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever can be. And I know I took that from Bret, uh, Bret Hart, but it is for real. It has to be good. It can't fail. After what happened, after what we're hearing right now, they have to bring their A game this time. They can't have do it. They got to have some great views for the Divas division. They have to have some great views for the tag team division. And they have to have an even better feud. Well, not even a few, but they have to have a better push leading on up to the Rumble, especially after what we just heard. They got to step up their A-game, even if that means that a few people got to take a step back. And I guess I could probably say, oh, maybe that was Vince's idea. I don't really know, man. He may have had somebody speaking in his ear. We know how Vince can actually run when it comes to certain ideas. I think he's actually listening to people this time. Maybe it's a chance that he's getting help behind the scenes from Paul Levesque. That could be a chance. I don't think Vince is doing this on his own. And I don't think Kevin Dunn's doing this on his own. They're listening to people now. They got to. Or they're going to lose millions. But honestly, y'all, the fate of WrestleMania 32 right now, I don't know. But it doesn't look good. Especially when their biggest draw is gone. It's going to be disappointing for me if it's bad. Because, shoot, I'm going to Dallas for this. And I know this does sound selfish, but I'm being real. What about all those fans that are expecting to have a blockbuster of a pay-per-view? that literally flew miles and miles from wherever home they came from and spending thousands of dollars on this thing. This is an investment to some people. They actually consider this to be an investment. For me, I just want to go, and I'm, I'm actually even where I'm from, to go over there and have a good time. Am I sounding selfish about it? Yeah, I am. But honestly, y'all, I really do want WrestleMania 32 to be great, and especially for a taker. Mark Calloway, for his entire legacy, deserves to have a decent match and deserves to have a match worth talking about even after he's gone, even after he's long and retired. And we know that this is going to be coming up, y'all. And honestly, no matter how many people are hating on Cena, Cena was the best bet. He was the sure bet to have a decent match because, number one, everybody hated Cena. It would have automatically made him heal. And number two, he would have literally brought up his A-game against... Um, the Undertaker for his last match. Seriously. But now, who's going to be next? And it's a possibility, and for many years, I actually did want this to happen. The guy that actually would put him down would be his brother. And that's the only alternative that we got. Have the Brothers of Destruction coming against each other. Having Kane being the guy to put him down. That's the only resolve that I can see for Undertaker. This should, But Kane has already fought Taker and lost. And so has Triple H fought Taker and lost. And even though it, it, even though it would be a great match to have Triple H go up against Taker again, he didn't win at all. He did not beat Taker. So the only alternative, the only person I really think that would make sense to put him down for, for the second time approaching him would be Kane. I can't think of anybody else. Bray was humiliated. Nobody's going to really take Bray seriously even going up against Taker. There's nobody else that's at Taker's caliber. We've already seen Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar has beaten him twice. So we don't need to see that again. And I'm happy that was the last time. But at this point, I don't know the fate of WrestleMania 32, y'all. And I'm really hoping that somehow that they can pull out something out of their butt the last minute to make it one of the best pay-per-views ever. Because a lot of people, this is something that a lot of people are going to remember. Whether people understand it or not, WrestleMania 32 is going to pretty much go into history of what people will remember out of WrestleMania. Sure, th WrestleMania 30 definitely was the most historic, but this is going to be the one with a lot of historic value as well because this will be Taker's last ride. They got to, I mean, Taker lost his streak at WrestleMania 30, and this will be his last ride at 32. They got to do something, man. They just can't sit on their hands on this. And I really do hope that they can pull something out. But guys, I want to hear your thoughts about this. With Cena being gone, what do you think is going to be the fate of WrestleMania 32? Leave your comments in the comment section below. I hope they can pull something out, man. I really do. Especially the fact that many fans like me are going to be there. And yeah, that does sound selfish, but I'm keeping it real. Nature Girl 30 signing off, y'all. Peace out. Later.